Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this episode one of Jason Discharge. And this is your host, Jason Anthony Pinheiro, live from his studios in Barn Hill, Brooklyn. So, uh, for those who know me, my name is Jason Anthony Pinheiro. I'm an independent transit advocate based in New York City. So, uh, let's go into what we're going to discuss in our first episode. Is that one, what happened uh, today in the MTA uh, committee meetings? Let's go into them. Shall we? <clears throat> My apologies. We start today with uh We start the day basically 12 hours ago arriving on two Broadway. That's right in front of right in front of Bowling Green Station. And and then we retreated this from the daily news that says MTA officials are making changes to say to save every second possible in the subways hopping. It will help cut in a thousand. 10,000 delays a month. Apparently, they achieved that. And of course, um, we captured this GIF of our beloved Chuck Marler. He returned today after being last month absent and obviously he was on fire all morning and of course this tweet was uh sent out by jose martinez a uh, spectrum news a uh, dedicated transit reporter who happens to attend every single uh new york city transit uh committee or in other words every mta committee except uh finance and uh cpoc and obviously uh bridges and tunnels so i let off on uh, new york city transit uh committee uh and obviously we had uh stand out in nimby speaking uh Maureen Bowden uh of course making his uh his usual nonsense let's put it this way his pure nonsense and let's in what Murray Bowden said this morning. Oh, God. 
these people this is so this is so funny <laughs> well, folks, uh, my apologies that I have. I had to laugh because honestly, Murray Bowden does this every single month. Not only at the MTA territory, he goes to his friends over there at uh, New Jersey Transit. He does the same thing over there with Kevin Corbett. And he goes to the Port Authority also. And he does, <clears throat> my apologies, he does the same thing with Rick Cotton over there. <clears throat> and of course, we had uh, today, we had uh, 1010 Wins Juliet Papa uh, tweeting uh, Andy Byford. Of course, uh, epic fail. Andy Byford doesn't have Twitter. <clears throat> and this is confirmed by himself. Again, New York City Transit President Andy Byford, is this person right here, doesn't own this Twitter handle. <clears throat> that person clearly is not Andy Byford. The Andy Byford that we know. That's not him. <clears throat> but of course, continuing on <clears throat> to our to our <clears throat> And then uh, right after that, Juliet Papa tweets uh, again using that uh, Twitter handle. And again, that Twitter handle doesn't belong to New York City Transit President Andy Byford. Says that team 10K monthly transit delay reduced in month of September. 48K weekday delayed the lowest in three years. <clears throat> and then we have Washington Heights' own um, Emma Fitzsimmons 
tweeting this. Andy Byford and his team are really excited about the drop in salary delays, but they were clear. We're not declaring victory. We have a lot more to do. And of course, Emma herself lives in the Washington Heights area, and she experienced a uh, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> of course uh spectrum news tweeted this the latest MTA figures for weekday subway delays for the month of September shows writers experience 48,212 delays, 12,000 fewer delays in August. <clears throat> and of course, we tweeted uh, <clears throat> the report regarding uh city controller scott Springer that's calling to reduce fares on Long Island railroad and metro north within city limits but not uh showing support for pen access and of course <clears throat> metro north presented a plan that's called Way ahead. Let's take a listen. So there you guys have it. That was the video that was presented <clears throat> regarding uh, Metro North's uh, new plan of uh, fast, uh, way ahead. And uh, obviously, uh, Jose Martinez uh, posted this afterwards. 
a picture of a sign posted by transit police <clears throat> in some uh, New York City subway uh, stations. This one, he took it at Bowling Green along the four and five lines. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, uh, what more was discussed? Uh, let's go to uh, Dan Vivoli's uh, Twitter feed. And honestly, uh, he is the the transit reporter for the New York Daily News. <clears throat> and obviously he was there uh, this morning. And of course, uh, he posted this. Dan Rivoli posted, there's a lot of positive talk about Andy Bai for 60 minute interview. He posted the link at the MTA board today. <clears throat> and he uh, tweeted, board member Veronica Vanderpool said, MTA has been that bad at advocating for itself. Now, tone has shit for the better. And of course, he keeps uh, <clears throat> tweeting that uh, board member Weisberg has asked the subway chief to account a great leap forward on delayed cuts. Even small accounts even small engines can change that figure. Uh, Sally Librera uh, uh, replied to him. <clears throat> and of course, uh, two subway signal from Siemens and, Ta and Talis opt for no bid contract to install model signal equipment on the new train card for the A5 line. Talis right now is late to finish signal on the 7th. And of course, uh, he posted this picture regarding <coughs> the L train shutdown uh, service alternatives. Uh, two additional A train round trips will be operating between 10 and midnight. There will be 26 additional E train round trips on weekdays, 12 on the F, 66 on the, on the G. But some peak will operate between Court Square, not Court Square, 23rd Street, is Court Square 23rd Street has done the E and the M. Court Square is on the 7 and G. <clears throat> so, um, so there will be peak hour trains short turning at Bedford North Street, while others will terminate at 18th Avenue on the Culver Line. Due to terminal capacity constraints at Church Avenue. And 16 total additional J and Z combined will operate on weekdays. One trip on each peak direction will be cut and AT will be added in other hours. And due to increased demand at stations between Broadway Junction, Eastern Parkway, Fulton Street, and East New York. And Marcy Avenue, J and the Z will operate local in that segment at all times. And peak hour J and Z skip stop will be operating between Jamaica Center and Broadway Junction only. But at least on <clears throat> uh, three fewer are 
our train round trip will be operating on weekdays, two in the morning, one in the evening, to in order to accommodate additional uh M train service along Queens Boulevard. So basically, um, we spoke to board member Andrew Albert, and uh, he mentioned that obviously he's not complaining regarding this because obviously those three round trips that the R will be losing, the M will be having it along Queens Boulevard. <clears throat> And again, uh, then he, uh, then uh, then we've only posted uh, MTA member David Jones asked about in certain future where there's a trade in spending on transit service to pay down growing debt. Uh, MTA chief financial officer Bob Ferran says debt payments is 19 percent of revenue. Moran adds challenge is funding cap the capital program increasingly with debt. <clears throat> and let's move to another transit reporter. Who is Danielle Fafaro? As you guys know, Danielle Fafaro, she is the transit reporter for the New York Post. And honestly, uh, she posted this. Board member Veronica Vanderpool says that she hopes plan, work, plan worker body camps are not made by the same company that the NYPD body camps. That's a good point. Uh, obviously, she mentioned this uh, because uh, NY, uh, NYPD officer in Staten Island, uh, his body cam uh, almost exploded on him. And of course, she posted this also. There were slightly more major families on the subway this year than last year, says Chief Edward De La Torre. And we're going to Edward De La Torre. Um, here's my uh, personal opinion. In terms of Policing in the subway has gone pretty much downhill since he is in charge. But this person right here, Chief Joe Fox, he is the person who I will always, no matter what, always respect because he was always listening. Paying attention to those stations where fare evasion is a problem. Like for instance, my home station, Atlantic Avenue Barclay Center, on the 4th Avenue Pacific Street entrance, fair ration occurs there in a daily basis. Uh, we have J Street Metro Tech on the southern, on the southern entrance at uh, J Street and Fulton Street. You always see people there begging for, for swipes every single day. At uh, West 4th Street, on both ends, you see uh, people begging for swipes. 
125th Street on all lines except the one. You see people begging for swipes there too. And where's Chief de la Torre? Nowhere to be found. Even at 14th Street Union Square, where we have a transit district um, precinct inside the station. You see fair vision there as well. But you never see police officers there. Of course not. Let's go to Jose Martinez's uh, Twitter feed to see what he uh, posted. Of course, uh, he he was uh, talking uh, in inside City Hall with our laws. And getting this, revolting staying late. And this is the hashtag that he uses all the time. Hopefully, the New York Daily News transcript script moves into the field level seats and catch a foul ball and gets an autograph from the king of the MTA public speaking session. Who Jose Martinez is referring to? Pretty clearly, he's referring to da, 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 uh, let's see we find that picture. Let's see who that person could be. Is it me? Uh, no, according to him, I am not the king of the public speaking. Is it all? Is it my colleague Omar Vera? Uh, no, it's not. This is the person that he refers to as the king of the public speaking session, Murray Bolden himself. Of course, Jose Martinez and I disagree on that. But, Let's talk about a little bit what's going to be discussed on Wednesday morning. We have right here the MTA's board action items. Now, are those items that were considered and approved in the committees this morning and this afternoon, of course, and it will con be considered on Wednesday morning. And of course, uh, go to page. All right. Basically, the the board book for Wednesday is 126 pages long. And of course, We have in terms of procurements, 
this month includes 11 actions for a proposed spending of $20.7 million. That includes a non uh, public work contract with the New York State uh, Department of Corrections. And again, uh, as we go through uh, Wednesday's uh, board materials, uh, we want to mention that um, there's usually uh, MTA board members that make headlines. This month, um, Chuck Mertler made headlines again, like he always does, but in a positive way. Because Chuck Mertler, we admire Chuck Mertler. Not because he is a Holocaust survivor, because he is <clears throat> he is one of those board members that he has a lot of lot knowledge. He's from the Bronx, like I do. I was born in the Bronx. But he lives in Riverdale, just like Freddie Farrell. Freddie Farrell, as you guys know, he was a Bronx Borough president. And up to this date, he is the most respected politician in the New York City area. And he happens to chair transit. And when, when Joe Lotus is in, he runs the, um, the food board meeting. When Tom Pretikas decided to retire because of his health. Freddie Ferrer was basically the head of the MTA. And right now we are looking at page 73 of the board book that we have uh, from uh, transit from the procurement supply chain uh, senior vice president Steve Pachaki. Uh, now of course the, the food board is considering uh, expediting the R211 procurement. And of course, uh, doing uh, finance, this same action, this same action item was brought to uh, finance attention, and board member Andrew Albert uh, asked if the R two eleven will be uh, CBTC ready or CBTC compatible. And of course, uh, President Byford, who happened to be in the boardroom at that time, he answered um, Andrew Albert's question that will be CBTC ready. Because, of course, the R211 will go to the A5 in the line. That means the A train. But nonetheless, uh, let's go now to 
the disgrace of the month. This is a segment under Jason Discharge that will designate a person or persons that represent the disgrace of the month. And the disgrace of the month is awarded to Sanchez of Channel 2, who happened to be on the MTA board this morning. And of course, uh, we demanded uh, a response from her regarding the situation of the Long Island Railroad commuters. She referred me to her news desk. I asked, you have Twitter? She said no, but here's the answer. She definitely, she definitely has Twitter. Here it is. At H Sanchez TV. Definitely, Jesus Sanchez, you are the disgrace of the month. And of course, the other of the month is, of course, Murray Bolden. That, of course, we, we always laugh when he does his his nonsense speeches every month. He goes on and goes on and has uh, so many rants with so many board members. By the same time, he adores uh, those in New Jersey. But of course, you guys are wondering, why did I come up with this new project out of nowhere? Well, I was earlier this afternoon on the end train, going over the Manhattan Bridge. And since I'm bilingual, English and Spanish, I used Google Translate to look for a word that in Spanish is called descalga. So we came up with the term discharge. So that is product of my this wonderful uh, second uh, project that I came in mind. But obviously, let's go back to my YouTube channel. And uh, you guys are wondering, when do you start uh, when do you start it uh, doing uh, let's say projects? We started off with our YouTube series, State of the Track. Now, of course, we started it back in August 1st, 2015, when not even Andy Byford was around.
and of course uh we have done um uh, clips in in almost every single station in the um, in the new york city transit from from Pan Bay Park to Baychester Avenue to 7th Avenue 9th Street to uh, Marcy Avenue to Cleveland Street, Cypress Hills, um, 86th Street, 2nd Avenue, Elder Avenue, my birth. Uh, neighborhoods, um, 36th Street, Queens, uh, 49th Street. But where did I start this pet project of mine that we started back in 2015? We started it at the most awkward place. And that is Sterling Street on the two and the five. And then that same day, we did 14th Street, 7th Avenue. Then we did Ball Hall. Bowery, Bryant Park, Delancey Essex, 28th Street on the 6th, Downtown, Devon Street, Grand Central, DeKalb, 42nd Street Shuttle and Grand Central, 6th Avenue on the L, 14th Street Union Square on the, on the Lexington and Broadway lines. Times Square, Brooklyn Bridge, uh, Houston, 23rd Street, San Family, 53rd Street, West 4th Street, Fulton Street, uh, Port Square, Sausage Archer, Flushy Main Street, Atlantic Avenue, Barclay Center, J Street, Mental Tech. Broadway Lafayette Street, Bleecker Street, Two Gardens Union Turnpike, 168th Street, 34th Street, Hell Square, Chamber Street, World Trade Center, 14th Street, 6th Avenue, Bowling Green, Kingsbridge Road, Harchester, 36th Street, 4th Avenue, A6 Street, Lexington, Lexington Avenue, 59th Street, 51st Street, 50th Street, 8th Avenue, Greensboro Plaza, Woodside, Lexington Avenue, 53rd Street, 68th Street, Hunt College, Carroll Street, 2nd Avenue on the F. The 100 uh, stay on the track, we did it once again at Sterling Street. This time we did the full station. 21st Street, Van Oss, Hunters Point, Utica Avenue, Salson Boulevard on the F, Chamber Street on the Jane Z, Broad Street. The old cell ferry loop. We haven't done done the new one. <clears throat> Clark Street, 125th Street, 8th Avenue. The old Cathedral Parkway on 10th Street. We haven't done it in the new one. 57th Street, 6th Avenue. Fifty Seventh Street, Seventh Avenue. 
33rd Street, 79th Street, Broadway, 103rd Street, Broadway, 125th Street on the 1, Prospect Park, Franklin Avenue, Roosevelt Island, 75th Avenue, 169th Street, 63rd Drive, Regal Park, Dutchie Boulevard, 103rd Street, Corona Plaza, 69th Street, 40th Street, Lowry, Jamaica Avenue, Van Rick Expressway, Kings Ridge Road, Jerome Avenue, Beach 36th Street, Inwood 12th, 7th, 175th Street, West Farm Square, East Trevon Avenue, Lomer Street, Lefferts Boulevard, Neptune Avenue, Church Avenue on Brighton, Parkside Avenue, Avenue J, Net Road, Brighton Beach, Coney Island, Stillwell Avenue, East 105th, Southern Avenue, Bushwick Avenue, Aberdeen Street, DeKalb Avenue on the L, Morgan Avenue, Bedford Avenue, 34th Street, Hudson Yards, Burr Avenue, Broadway, Metropolitan Avenue, Middle Village, Bay Ridge, 95th Street, 86th Street, Bay Ridge, 77th Street, Brooklyn, 53rd Street, Brooklyn, Howard Beach, JFK, Astoria Boulevard, 30th Avenue, obviously these are 30th, Broadway, 36th, and 39th were before Enhanced Station Initiatives. 181st Street, Dykeman Street on the 1. Woodhaven Boulevard, 233rd Street, 155th Street on the BND, 163rd Street, Amsterdam Avenue. This is what this was before ESI. We have to do a new one before after ESI. Warrison Avenue, Soundview, Broad Channel, 116th Street on the 2 and the 3, 148th Street, 96th Street, 2nd Avenue, Clinton, Washington, Grant Avenue, Crescent Street, Chauncey Street, 18th Avenue, Arnerton Avenue, 125th Street on the D, Woodlawn, 3rd Avenue, 149th Street, 174th Street, Marble Hill, 225th, Lafayette Avenue, Union Street, Prospect Avenue on the R, Bergen Street on the 2 and the 3, 104th Street, Walkaway Boulevard, 96th Street, Beach 105th, 62nd Street, New Utrecht, 25th Avenue, Bay Parkway, 22nd Avenue, Avenue X, Beach 25th, Aqueduct, No Conduit, Soda Avenue, Rotten Road, Junior Street, New Lots Avenue, 
and of course we had to we have to add uh one other thing to my first pet project and of course there is a couple of stations that we have to uh cover ourselves and that will be done in the next uh months but of course because of all of this since eight since august 1st 2015 we are going to see we are seeing the results of this Obviously, on January 19, 2017, we started to see the results on the Winter Hamishon's uh, leadership that we saw Operation Track Suite that was launched 2016. And still, we were uh, doing our state of the track uh episodes even when track sweep was on the way and And this is the company that supplies that that train. See? NEU Railways have already supplied 15 backtracks in major subway systems as London, New York, Paris and Brussels, and they are designing two, no, three new VAP tracks that have been ordered in 2015 by New York City Transit. And let's watch this video of the VAP train in operation. See, that's basically, that's basically the, the back train in operation. It has been 
three over three years since first I started with State of the Track. And I'm very proud that through these videos that we have done throughout the years is giving results, but we have to refresh the concept. And that's why every month we're going to have instead of doing videos in stations we're going to do something that we cannot do in a public setting like for instance the mta board that we cannot criticize people for their actions or lack thereof. Like for instance, Hazel Sanchez, this reporter obviously she works for Channel Two in New York City. And and if her bosses are watching this, she has to be Fired. She doesn't belong in Channel Two. Let's watch the piece. Let's watch the shitty report that she did interviewing someone that is bigger than her. That's it. That's the disgrace number one of the month. CBS to own Hazel Sanchez. And she deserves to be fired. Because she doesn't report what really matters. And by that, Let's see what's trending regarding the Long Island Railroad. For those commuters like my beloved contributor, Matt Camper, witnesses every single day. Look at this tweet from Christy Lazy Lazy Jet. Long Island Railroad would be nice if we could hear that stop at that we are at and what is what was the next one since the 639 Hempstead train is old and nasty and you can't see out the dirty windows. 
And of course, someone from the Long Island Railroad uh, social media team tweeted out to this person, but this person never replied. Oh, we have this one from John Parker that says, hashtag MTA, hashtag LIRR. Here's a new one. Now we are subject not just to panhandlers as the trains wait at Penn Station, but now we have political idiots handing out flyers on the cars. Hashtag stop the madness. And of course, we had a uh, MTACC president's report on ESI access to Long Island Railroad Committee. All system contracts awarded and work is on the way throughout the alignment. But Look at this report from Alfonso Castillo from Newsday. A Long Island Railroad writer himself from Valley Stream. And he writes, this was this morning. RIRR is, is taking aggressive steps to keep one unwanted passenger tra of trains, rain water. Does Hazel Sanchez care about this? No way. Because for starters, Hazel Sanchez is a general assignment reporter. I wonder who is the news director in Channel 2. And that person also should be fired. Look at this tweet from, from Juan Carlos Gomez. It says, LIRR, with four minutes to wait at Brentwood Station for the Penn Station bound train, we were told that to be on train two. You just made women, children, and elderly move from one end to the other end to climb horrible, maintained stairs. That's not nice. Does Hazel Sanchez care about this? No. Look, look at this. Look at this other picture from Sophia, from SP. Sophia P. Nice to put clean work clothes to have sit on old crusty tape on disgusting Long Island Railroad train. Shame on you. Hashtag L I R R. PCAC wrote it this. He's definitely more open to hearing about the writer's experience, which I think is a big step forward, said Mark Epstein, general chairman for the PCAC for the Long Island Railroad Commuter Council. And as you guys know, let, let's let's say it this way. What Philip Ann, Catherine Grinaldi, and 
Andy Byford have in common? All three ride their respective systems. As you guys saw the video earlier, Catherine Grinaldi, she uses the Hudson line. Philip Eng uses the Port Jefferson line to Smithtown. And Andy Byford uses the subway to get to and from every single destination that he goes. But does Hazel Sanchez and other general assignment reporters care about this? No. Let's see what else we have. Look at this. This was October 20th. The Long Island Railroad's reporting delays on four branches. Fort Walkway, Montauk, Fort Jefferson, Fort Washington branch. This was sent out two days ago at 6.15 p.m. Does Hazel Sanchez care about this? No. Let's go to a more familiar territory. New York City subway. I'm applying to this person called Lauren Hand.
I apologize, people. Is that I have to reply to some idiots. Look at this, Dexter Martin. He went for he uh he tweeted to NYCT Subway, homeless writer writing on southbound A train to Lefferts Boulevard, car fifty nine forty eight. Sleeping on chair with vomit on train floor. But of course, let's go to my Twitter page. And you guys going to see um, for yourselves what I witnessed last night. Oh. This was this afternoon at Times Square, 42nd Street. The escalator at the middle, uh, this is on the seven train platform at Times Square. The stairs going up, not working. Escalator number not found. This was what I witnessed last night on a ninth Avenue bound R train on car 5526. And of course, NYCT Subway and their dedicated uh, social media team. Uh, Reply to me in a matter of minutes. And even we found this on the Guy V. Bonary uh, ferry boat on the Staten Island Ferry. This picture, I took it last night going back to Manhattan. But I didn't get uh, a response of DLT until this morning. And they replied, DLT is aware and working with MTA to bring updated New York City subway maps to Staten Island Ferry vessels. And this reply was sent to me at 12.41 p.m. Over 18 hours after I sent this tweet from the Guy V. Molinari uh, vessel going towards Manhattan. And of course, another one. Something missing in that picture. And you see this in R, R62 and R62As that are running on the one line. Still has the old name fade out instead of having the new name and opened WTC Cortland. And of course, we start to see uh, pictures like uh, things like this. Fair relation with you. Violators are subject to to arrest or fine. Know the rules. Visit mta.info. But does the virus alliance going to realize that this will cost them more than they expected 
because what their storytelling obviously they were not convincing me. And obviously, uh, John Raskin, he is in my back blacklist, and he will be a future disgrace nominee. And of course, we have the one and only Murray Bowden speaking at AJT. And of course, uh, but of course, you guys will realize uh, who are my biggest fans. Last week, it happened to be Telemundo's 47th anchor, Nilda Rosario, and 1010 Wins owns Glenn Chuck and Juliet Papa. <laughs> And of course, I have people who even admire me every time. And you guys are gonna see. First off, Matt Camper, uh, both families, Alex, Vincent, Omar, you guys are the best tag team that we could get. In other words, we could have. Obviously, I have support from Telemundo 47. And of course, Telemundo 47 appreciates what I do. For example, uh, I happen to be in New Jersey today. And of course, uh, Daddy Noah, she liked what I posted. She replied to me like she always does. And of course, uh, we have morning this morning. Uh, someone had, uh, a birthday today. No, obviously, Jose Martinez, he, uh, quotes me once in a while. Obviously, uh, Telemundo's, uh, money anchor, Alan Villafaña, his birthday was today. Happy birthday, Adam. And uh, obviously, we had to take the opportunity and uh, we we treated this regarding uh, board member Andrew Soul that after like an hour and a half of uh, being quiet, he finally spoke and agreed with Chuck Merler regarding the rubbish removal. And then we tweeted that board member, uh, Adriel Soul, was quiet 
Wow, Chuck murders on fire for for a good cause. And of course, uh, this month Elisa Pica was saved from being a disgrace, but she is in the watch of being future nominees for the disgrace of the month. Obviously, uh, our contributor, Matt Camper, like always. We have uh, Cuomo's uh, corruption sending me this on Twitter. And of course, uh, Matt Camper always, uh, we have uh, Telemundo 47 on um, radio audience, Ryan Solis. She replied to several uh, tweets on Saturday. And of course, we have Atari uh, Noah. And then it's at least replying to me on Friday. It was Thursday actually, Thursday. And of course, uh, we have so many. We have Andy Quinto as our new uh, member. And of course, and of course, we have Bob Bolton that he always quotes me every single month. That's a good thing. And of course, like always, I'm admired by Telemundo family, Nilda, Yolanda, Nairi, among others. And unfortunately, the, the American media doesn't know about that. But uh, and uh, obviously, I'm gonna respond to a comment 
uh, posted by a fellow contributor, uh, Carlton DeLuza from Queens. Uh, he posted Andy Byford instead of grandstanding the news media. How about picking up a bullhorn and helping people with announcements tonight or Friday night when service changes go into effect? and people are lost, communication is horrible at station platforms and trains. Uh, first things first, one, there's posters announcing weekday and weekend service change. Usually, the weekend service change are posted in stations on Wednesdays. In a way, on Wednesday, you should know what you could expect for the weekend. Or even you could do this. Going into MTA then for Going to the service change set to the service change section, clicking on subways, and it lets you view service changes up to four weeks in advance. And we selected November twelfth. Monday. And we already got the service change that's going to happen during that period of time. So for those who like to plan ahead, way ahead, this is a good a good tool to enter our uh, MTA that info. So instead of complaining, you should read better. And of course, uh, since that we are doing our episode one of Discharge, we have some server changes to report. We have on the seven, we have a uh, Manhattan bound seven trains of Ronnie Express from 74th Street Broadway to 33rd Street. By 33rd Street. Because of a slow moving work train, expect delays on seven train service on both directions. For service to and from bypass stations, take a flushing Main Street bound seven train as an alternative. Take the Q32 bus which runs under the seven train between 38th Street, Jackson Heights, and Prince Ball Plaza. And also we have some Metropolitan M, M trains running on the F between 36th Street, Queens, and 47th Street, Rockefeller Center. This is due to system maintenance between uh, Lexington M, 53rd Street, and Court Square 23rd Street. So basically, the 53rd Street Tunnel. So expect delays on the E, F, and M trains. 
So, good things start, but they have to come to a close. I will want to thank everybody that watched this uh, first episode of Jason Discharge. As a reminder, you can follow me on social media over here at Jason BX and Y0619. On Facebook, I'll be facebook.com slash Jason BX0619. And on Instagram, that'll be Instagram dot com slash Jason BX and Y nineteen. This is my Instagram page. Yeah, you could follow me there as well. And of course, I am also on Periscope under the same handle as Twitter. So, it is 9.34 in the evening. We want to thank everybody that joined me for this uh, start of a new project. Uh, there's more to come. And this is just getting better, better, and better. And of course, this couldn't be possible. And I want to thank uh, several people that, in my opinion, because of them, I won't be fighting for they are saying cause. And one of them is Matt Camper. Matt, I want to thank you very, very, very much. Uh, giving me the strength of not only advocating for those who live in the city like my own self, but for those like you and others who live outside the city and uses commuter rail to get to the city and goes through either delays, trains being canceled, uh, temporary platforms that are so unsafe Dealing with uh, people that shouldn't be in their position anymore, among other things. And I've been joining Matt in 
several instances, like some uh, station tours we did together. Uh, most recently, we did uh, last Thursday, we did uh, WTC Cortland together. We did uh, an analysis of last week's pandemonium on the Long Island Railroad. And of course, uh, he discussed what I mentioned this morning and part of the afternoon at MTA headquarters. And Wednesday will be just something minimal that basically will be the approval of disapproval of whatever is in this material book. And then on November 13th, We will hear and listen from Matt Camper himself in front of the whole Long Island Railroad Committee speaking about his daily frustrations running the railroad and giving to Long Island Railroad President Philip Ang and the Long Island Railroad uh, committee members who happen to be MTA board members, and especially to Mitch Pally, that's the only MTA board member who represents the island as we speak. So it is 9.39 p.m. right now here in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, now we could say thank you for watching. If you're not a YouTube subscriber of mine, please subscribe to my channel because this is only the beginning of something big, something innovative. And this is the beginning of this charge. So thank you for watching. And we will talk on Wednesday at the MTA board meeting. Have a good night, everybody.